Well, North Korea has been defying the world by testing out its nuclear missiles, but now there are new fears that the regime could be experimenting with biological warfare. This comes after traces of anthrax antibodies were found in the body of a North Korean soldier who defected to the South. So what threat could this pose to the world? Joining me now is Rebecca Grant. Rebecca is the president of the Iris Independent Research and a national security and military analyst. Nice to have you. Hi, nice to be here. What's the biggest concern here? So many concerns. I think the number one concern is how far North Korea may have gone with its weapons programs. So South Korea says that they think the North is working on as many as 13 different types of bio agents. The real question then is, can they weaponize these? There are a lot of doubts about their ability to do so, but they have a lot of choices. One is to put them on a scud type missile. Another is to fit them on an artillery shell. They could even use humans to carry these agents across. South Korea is telling us that they think it's most likely the North could weaponize small batches of anthrax or smallpox in a period of about 10 days. So it reminds us what a threat this regime is becoming. Mm -hmm. And let's take this step by step, uh, Rebecca. So if Kim Jong-un is experimenting in biological warfare, does he need help from other, another country to develop the anti-anthrax antibodies as well as anthrax and the pathogens that he's uh, supposedly developing? Well, North Korea has clearly already gotten some help, but strains like the anthrax strain uh, were pretty easy to obtain in the 80s and 90s. They've likely had this in the country for quite some time. Now, don't forget, anthrax is also a naturally occurring strain, so there are a bunch of reasons why this defector might have had the antibodies in his blood. They're all scary. One, he was exposed to it. Another reason, maybe he was vaccinated, with the idea being that he would be immune if they used these in an attack. It's also remotely possible that he handled farm animals, but since he's a soldier, I don't think so. So the question here is how much are they going down this road towards weaponizing a bio agent? Right. But also the question is, Rebecca, so can he, Kim Jong-un, can he develop this stuff on his own is what I'm trying to find out if, if there's anybody helping him to develop yeah, these Yeah, I see what you mean. I thought, okay. Absolutely. At this point, I think they're capable of doing a lot of this on their own. Now, mm -hmm. what's harder that they'll need help with is to really weaponize this into something that would fit on a missile. I don't think they're nearly as capable of doing that. But this just reminds us this maniac regime has gone too far. No wonder the UN Security Council is so adamantly opposed and we're trying so hard to denuclearize that peninsula. Yeah, so what should the US and allies like South Korea and Japan do about this latest information? Well, this is not news to South Korea. They've sort of reported it for us. So this is just, again, more vigilance. And what all our allies need to do is stick behind the UN Security Council in putting harder sanctions on North Korea. We've got to drive them to the negotiating table. We just waited too long. And the anthrax issue reminds us that we can't let Kim Jong-un go on and develop more of an offensive capability that he wants to do and get ever more sophisticated weapons. What he's doing is really unprecedented in trying to develop an offensive capability that threatens us here in North America, Canada, Europe, Australia, Asia, and that's why he just has to be stopped. So when you say that uh, to stop him to get uh, from getting more sophisticated weapons, are we talking about chemical weapons or actual uh, military weapons like bombs that could perhaps, you know, you, can pop, you said you, you don't think that he is capable of developing an ICBM that he can pop that anthrax on top of? But so what are you concerned about that he might get his hands on? Well, if we let him continue with no sanctions, then down the road he can not only do ballistic missiles, but he can purchase or develop cruise missiles, hypersonics, and continue with this bioagent research, maybe even go into chemical weapons. So I think at this point, you know, we saw an example many years ago with Iraq in 1991. They had actually uh, produced quite a bit of anthrax and had maybe as many as 20 missiles ready to go. Our coalition attacked bioweapon sites back in 1991. 
So we need to have the military plans in place, and we need to make sure that all countries are really abiding by the UN sanctions. No more smuggling, and especially no more military assistance going in from China or Venezuela or Cuba or anyone yeah. to and, help and, this regime. And you said something, I want to jump in, I've got 20 seconds if you can. So wouldn't you say that if, if Kim Jong-un can develop chemical weapons, wouldn't that make China really stand up and take notice to try to make sure that they put all sanctions on North Korea as possible as the president is requesting? I think China will really stand up and take notice. Yes, this is a risk to China. North Korea is a risk to China's people and to China's status in the world. So I think North Korea is really going to push China too hard here, and China's going to come back strong and try to really impose those sanctions. It's not by accident that we released that picture of the ship. You know, China knows we can see all this, see their ships, and see what's going on. That was to put more pressure on China to continue to help us at the UN. Yep. Rebecca Grant, have to leave it there. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. Well, meanwhile, back in Washington.